my journey from 170 pounds to 200 pounds back to 171 pounds. During the pandemic, I gained about 30 pounds over my set point weight. Normally, I have a strategy to be able to maintain my weight, which is something that I had done for years. But this time it was different. The Lord wanted me to change how I looked at my health, my weight, etc. I went through a process of starting, stopping, seeing results, then not seeing results. Then I got discouraged. It wasn't until I went into a spiritual fast that God decided to take the weight off as well as emotional weight. It took a miracle from him to be able to get that weight off of me. Now I am all about making sure that I maintain the gift of the weight loss that he has provided me with and I've been able to get down 30 pounds this year alone. Are you committed or are you just interested? Just asking a question. So let's go on a little journey. Here is what I look like before the pandemic. I was working outside of the house, of course, and I was actively in front of people and my image was something or my weight was something that I definitely wanted to keep in check. And I want to share that my body and some of my eating habits when I get on binges, emotional binges, and I eat snacks, I could easily gain weight. I could have easily been well over a 200 pound life or 230 pound woman if I did not have the discipline that I had over those years. But I took that discipline for granted when I didn't have to go out and be in front of people all the time like I was doing as an outside sales consultant. So getting back to my disciplines and accepting no as an answer about my stagnant weight, I know a lot was involved in my weight gain, not just the eating. For one, I was having severe sleep deprivation. So I struggle with sleep issues and insomnia at times. And when you cannot get to a natural pattern of sleep, the stress will cause your hormones to put you in a position where it's holding on to your reserves. It's holding on to fat, it's stress. So that was a huge contributing factor to my weight gain. And I also noticed that there was some drastic changes in just certain things regarding my hormones. So that was another factor in why the weight was just not coming off with the traditional ways I was able to maintain my weight. So it wasn't until I really started putting together the Dream Big Goals goal setting guide. And I also had uh, been talking to the Lord about this and I got on a 90 day system for my goal setting. Not only did I set the goals, but I got into a rhythm and a system, which is something that I help you all with through the Dream Big Goal Setting Guide and Planner. It is a goal setting guide to initially set your goals for life and business, but it will move you into a planning system for 90 days or 13 weeks or so where you are focused on just certain goals, specific goals, about three goals on that quarter, and that's all you're doing. Once you set up the goals, you will have a system that you're working from to accomplish those goals. I would encourage you to check out this video, Goals Versus Systems, to get an idea of what I'm referring to, okay? And to attend one of the Dream Big Goal Setting Challenges that I will be hosting very soon. So make sure that you're signed up at dreambiggoals.com. Also, when it comes to having the strategy, I immediately went ahead and dropped nine to 10 pounds immediately, right? And then I gained a couple of back and I was still stagnant for a minute where that extra weight, that, that goal weight was not coming off. I needed to get down at least about 20 more pounds. So I prayed about it. I really consulted the Lord with everything in me and told him about my struggles. And I shared with him why this was causing me, you know, so much turmoil to not be able to get this weight off. And the purpose of me having good health is to build up the body of Christ, is to build up the church, to build up more believers in the kingdom of God so that my health could be a testimony and when I have poor health or when I have weight 
issues and insomnia issues or certain things, it's going to slow me down from being able to do the work that I'm called to do. So I did go into a 21 day fast. The fast was no food per se, quote unquote, but the first day I diluted maybe a little, a few pieces of fruit just to kind of dilute that with tons of water so I can have some type of nutrient with a little honey. Okay. I did that the first day. I didn't do much of a smoothie or whatever. It was just very little, less than a handful of fruit. Okay. And then I diluted that with tons of water. And then I kind of did an apple and some nuts for a couple of days until I got into a rhythm of being without the food. And then I was going without the food consistently for some days. And then during the month, women have issues every month. I'll just leave it at that. So I got really sick and I had to eat something. I had to put some nutrients in my body because I struggled during that time. I can be down for three to four days at a time because I my body is just going through shifts, a hormone changes and I'm in pain, okay? A little TMI for some, but I feel that that's necessary for women to know their bodies and the men that are with them to be able to understand what their women are going through during those times. So that put me back after I got back to eating with that, that put me back on hunger again. So it stirred up the hunger hormone again, gridolin. So the rest of the fast after that for about the next 10 days until I ended the fast was a struggle because that hormone had stirred back up for me to be hungry again. Let me go backtrack. I was also starting to do coconut water uh, diluted with a little apple juice. And I would also drink that for the electrolytes and just a little bit of booze so I could at least get some work done. And that was great. But even towards the end of the fast, I was just getting worn out from the coconut water and the diluted apple juice. I dilute less than a cup of apple juice and a ton of water just to kind of give me a little spark and give me a little nutrition or just to be able to go on with my day. So I ended up getting into that fast and I entered ketosis on three days because I had a rash for about a week, a ketosis rash on my chest. It itched very bad and it was painful. It was very uncomfortable. This fast was a very uncomfortable fast, but nonetheless, by the end of the fast, I had dropped 21 pounds and I could see after about seven days, how I saw with my own eyes that the fat was coming off. And that's very hard to do. To get the fat off, that's the biggest challenge. You could be doing all of the things. You could be working out consistently, doing all of the things with diet, nutrition, and everything. And because of our hormones, and because of the way our body changes as we get over 40 and as we get over 45, over 50, over 55, if we don't have a handle on understanding what that looks like and what that's like, we're gonna keep the weight on. So it took a miracle in a fast for God to pull that weight off of me. Now I wanna be clear, I did not go into a fast to manipulate God's hand. I didn't go into the fast with the intention of saying, I want to lose weight. I went into the fast for other things. And I went into this fast also for health reasons and for God to restore my health. So with me going into it with the right heart, not to manipulate going into a fast, like, oh, I'm going into a fast for quote unquote, these reasons. but I'm really wanting to lose weight. I know I know losing weight is a byproduct of fasting, of spiritual fasting. And I wanna say spiritual fasting because when you pull up fasting, you see so much about intermittent fasting and also other cultures and religion, they do fasting as well. But I wanna say Christian-based, Bible-based spiritual fasting, that's the type of fast that I was on, okay? It wasn't an intermittent fast, wasn't anything like that. I was on a spiritual journey. 
So with that, by the time I came out of that spiritual journey, that spiritual fast, I was down 21 pounds. So take that with the 10 pounds that I lost and then I gained a couple pounds. I was nearly a 30 pound weight loss. So I just wanna keep you encouraged that whatever you do as believers, God should always be a part of everything we do. Even when it comes to our weight, our diet, our health, we should always consult him on the best wisdom, the best knowledge and understanding to be able to carry out that plan. That's how I live my life. My life is operating and moving by faith in every single way, all the way down to whatever it is that I do when I wake up, uh, my nutrition, what I'm doing with Cure for the Soul, what I'm doing with the other projects that he has placed on my plate. In the name of Jesus, I consult him. And that's the... That's how I encourage all of us to be able to build that habit, build that spiritual muscle of going to God for everything. He cares about everything in our lives in the name of Jesus. If you're having challenges with your goals and reaching your goals, you definitely need to join the challenge because it is a game changer. The people that have uh, given me feedback already, the people that have invested in the actual program that I would be offering on there, the actual system, I'm already getting amazing feedback about how things are going for this. Them since they've taken the challenge. Okay. I appreciate you watching this video. Seek the Lord for all that you do. If this video has blessed you or resonated with you in any kind of way, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. God willing, I will see you on the next one. And if you are really serious about setting your goals for your life and business, and if you're serious about goal setting, binge off of the playlist that I'll include here.